Quad 66. You voted Quad 66 listens, and here is the Woot project. So, uh, what I wanted to do with this project was compare the performance of standard Woot frames to our you know, carbon fiber hybrid frames. So, uh, I think these have been pretty popularized recently by Rack and Heli, or um, previously by Rack and Heli, more recently by uh, Fractal. And the basic idea is you just take the advantage of a carbon fiber brace and then you just go ahead and stick your ducts on it. Um, one of the big questions is what's that going to turn out to with weight? So this is a pretty lightweight build and it's going to be my baseline. So this is a, a meter 65 frame and it's got 0702s built up at 18.2 um, grams. And so that's going to be the baseline we're going to do. Um, I haven't built these up yet with the frame, so I'm not sure exactly where they're going to come in, but hopefully it's pretty close. But I've got it on 0702 motors um, and with those gem fan flyblade props. And importantly, I've got the um, one of the two new boards. Um, there's both a beta FPV and a happy model. This is a beta FPV. These boards that now have black box built in, so we can actually capture black box data, which is, I think, really important to answer some of the questions I want to look at. So weight is obviously one of them. Another one is how much thrust do we actually get out of um, the props? Because if you look underneath, um, these frames are going to have different amounts of material um, underneath the prop. And I think the best one is actually going to be the traditional loop frame because these struts are very vertical, especially on the meter 65 frame. And on the two carbon fiber frames, and you got to remember we're putting half a duct on top of that. On these frames, the traditional frame looks, it has a thicker arm, but it's actually less total material than on the box frame. And then the last thing we want to look at is going to be um, the stiffness and how that translates into uh, the black box uh, performance in terms of noise and things like that. So the traditional loop frames are pretty noisy. In particular, they've got a lot of twisting on this like cross axis. So you can just take your thumbs there and just without a lot of pressure, you can really twist that frame cross axis. The loop frames are actually pretty decent in terms of the torsional. Like if you go this way, that's actually fairly stiff. Um, but we, just, we want to see if we can improve on that. So when I go ahead and grab the um, traditional cell frame and I put a little twist on it, one of the ideas to do the box frame is that because the, the traditional frame has just kind of straight arms like that, it doesn't resist that torsion quite as well as it could versus the box style because you're doing a box or an A style frame. And here, sure enough that the torsional resistance is very very good so the box frame is clearly going to win on that front it's going to resist that twisting um, not that the traditional frame is bad but that's just not a strong point what's interesting though about the box frame is that on that cross axis it's actually not very good um, it's a little bit better than the whoop frame traditional one but it's got you can see how much flex I'm not putting a ton of force, and that's flexing pretty easy, versus if you take the more traditional layout, um, I'm gonna put, it's it's hard to get it to twist. Like I'm putting quite a bit more force, and it's really not wanting to twist. And I specifically designed these frames to use the same amount of carbon fiber. So the box frame actually has more material in the arms, and I've had to take it away from the middle. You can see that difference there. Um, so although these look very, these arms look very thin and spindly, the total material, because there's two of them, is actually more material than I've got in the arms here. But it's got this big open-ish box design, and that's what makes it struggle with this like cross axis um, thing here. Now, at the end of the day though, does it matter what I can do with twisting with my fingers and things like that? No, we gotta put the quad up in the air, but, got black box built in so we can go ahead and compare the logs and get some objective data and see how that goes. All right, so time to put these in the air and I'll show you, oh, let me show you the weights on these frames. Let me get this teared. So the traditional frame, that's coming in 1.57. And I intentionally designed these, I tested a couple times with printing them to get the weights close. 
1.62. So the box frame is just a tiny bit heavier, um, but realistically speaking, that's when within the margin of error that these two are effectively the same weight, so the same amount of material. And I think that's really important because if you're not using the same amount of material, uh, it's pretty easy to get performance to look better on one than the other. And so this actually took me a little bit of effort printing out uh, test frames to make sure I got them within a very close uh, margin of error using the same amount of material. So I'm not cheating. This is really design versus design, not more carbon fiber versus less carbon fiber. All right, let's get these up in the air. Okay, so as expected, things did not go as expected. Uh, one of those things was that I wanted to get you not a ton of flight footage, but at least a little bit. But unfortunately, my expansion module uh, for my HD zeros gave it up the ghost. So this right here is the little plug that the expansion module uh, plugs into. And my fitment there has always been a little questionable. And I kind of tried to get it a little line a little bit better um, to get it sliding in and out, and it worked for a while, but it just seemed like every time I was um, plugging it in and out, it would um, put a lot of stress on that part, and now I'm no longer getting uh, analog through my HD0. So I can still fly, but I can't get the convenient uh, analog video, um, which was one of the reasons I got the HD0 goggles. So a little disappointing. Anyways, so no fly footage. The other problem I had was with the testing itself. And so when I first, the, the frame I first started with is this one here, and the logs did not look great. And it raised a couple questions for me. One was, was were the props hitting the, the camera? So on the whoop frame, uh, the camera sits up above the props, but when you go over to the carbon fiber frame, that whole, um, flight controller sits quite a bit lower and it actually brings the props up to the same level as the camera and from here you can probably see I don't know if you can see it but the clearance here it does clear it on this frame but it's super 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 tight and the logs initial logs I got off of this frame did not look good and so one of the questions it, it made me consider was are the props actually hitting that uh, canopy and is that causing one of my problems? So what I did is um, basically redid a whole bunch of testing with the new drone BI camera. So instead of using my little lightweight uh, camera canopy there, I went ahead and used this one, and um, that raised some additional issues. The other thing I did too was I was trying to keep the weight down as much as possible and trying to use rubber bands to hold the battery, but um, to keep the battery midline, um, these screws are just in the way, so I ended up printing out these little TPU uh, mounts, and they hold the battery really well. And so I just wanted to take those components out. I wanted to take a wiggly battery out, I wanted to take the, uh, the canopy out, and so basically I redid a bunch of testing, took a bunch of time, but I think it's worthwhile to get better data. So now we're going to kind of step through the logs, and we're going to go one by one. The first log I'm actually going to go through is comparing um, the plastic frame and comparing the uh, lightweight canopy versus the Nubi Drone BI cam uh, canopy. The reason I wanted to make the comparison is because this canopy is just not really providing a whole lot of structure to this frame. And so one of my questions was, if I switch to this canopy, which I'm not really planning on using, is it giving an unfair advantage um, to the whoop frame? Because the, the problem with the whoop frame is it's like, you know, we're kind of hypothesizing it's a little bit more twisty. And one of the advantages that the carbon fiber frame has is it's much stiffer. So um, in that cross, um, especially in that, you know, that, uh, you know, cross body, cross axis uh, thing where this Nubidrone canopy up here is not going to add much to this. This is already stiff enough in that plane that adding this canopy isn't going to make much of a difference versus on the whoop I thought it might. So let's take a look at the logs and the first one we'll go through is lightweight canopy versus Nubidrone BI canopy and does stiffening up the frame with the canopy make a difference? So that's the first log. 
Okay, so I pulled up some logs here, and so these are for the meter 65 frames, and the first two logs are going to be um, the newbie drone, uh, BI canopy, and then the second two are my, my really lightweight, low-profile canopy. And so what we're trying to do here, so I've got um, the D-term roll, and it doesn't really matter so much whether we look at D-term versus the gyro scaled. Uh, the important thing is just compare... Um, kind of the same terms. And so in this case, I've got the D-term roll up on all of them. And so what you want is basically just get a gist of how much noise there is. So we, we simply want less signal. Less signal is better. And so as we scroll through these, um, you can see that there's just some variability. I tried to keep the flights very similar, but clearly they're, um, you know, between these two, the same exact setup, they're not exactly the same. And then um, I've got two for the lightweight canopy here. And so overall, if I kind of scan through them, you know, this one jumps out as a particularly uh, good log. That one has less noise. And then probably the noisiest one, I think, is that log. And then these last two are sort of split in the difference, where these look impressively kind of consistent, actually. And so... To me, what, what I take home from that is that the canopy's not making a major difference because overall, on average, they're pretty similar with the worst and best logs being from the, the Uber drone canopy and then the two middle logs being from the lightweight canopy. So no big difference there, which is, which is good. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to some frame comparisons now. So first one I want to look at is one of the... To me, one of the more interesting questions is with two frames, and we can build the quad up exactly the same besides the frame, with the two frames, how does orienting the carbon fiber gonna have a difference? Um, in the box frame, we're kind of big and open in the middle, but we've got kind of the double struts, which gives us a ton of torsional resistance, but allows much more of this cross axis twisting versus this traditional, or what I'm calling traditional anyways, um, layout, where it's not going to be nearly as stiff in a torsional, but it's still pretty good. But it's going to be much, much stiffer in that cross axis. It's got really good stiffness cross axis. So let's take a look at those logs and let's see what, um, how this translates um, up in the air. Okay, so I've got four more logs pulled up. Um, the first two logs are, and in all cases, they're the carbon fiber uh, frames. The first two are the kind of traditional X layout, and the second two are the box style. Um, and so this is kind of what got my attention early on, and actually not in a good way, is that when I put the quad up in the air, it was just really unhappy. Um, and you can see that it's from more than one flight. Um, this is the D-term roll um, in this case. And the pitch is a little less impressive, but the roll clearly, you know, shows that we've got all kinds of issues going on. Um, there's a lot of low frequency stuff, and you just really have no chance at filtering this. Um, you can see once the filtering really kicks in, we're doing okay, but down low, it's just problematic. Um, so that was pretty concerning, and that's what got me looking into, is it the canopy that's rubbing um, on the props? Is it the battery wiggling around? And that's, that's why I kind of made those adjustments to the plan that I initially had. The um, box style, fortunately, looks quite a bit better. Um, maybe not as good as we'd like down low, but overall, nothing terrible looking there. And then, as I said, um, pitch is probably um, a little bit cleaner on all four of them, but still a little bit concerning when I go through, um, there's a pitch there, when I go through, uh, on the X style frame, the traditional kind of layout. I did have a question though, in terms of, well, okay, the, the box frame is a lot cleaner, but is it doing something else that we don't want to do? Uh, for example, the weight is further out and is it going to be less responsive? So let's clean up these graphs. And now I'm going to show you, take out all the noise and we're just going to look at the set point tracking. So I've got just set point there, and let's go ahead and um, do the same thing on one of these uh, box frames. So we're going to pull out, pull out all the noise so we can check the set point tracking. 
And so um, overall, is pleased. So I didn't tune. This tune is from a previous tune that I've done. And I was pleased that it's actually looking like it's held up pretty well in this case. Um, so we can see that the gyro in red is nicely following uh, the set point through this snap roll. Uh, and both directions look good. And then we should have some flips coming up. So flips never look quite as good, but still looking pretty decent. And then I should have some twitch moves and following the roll twitches looking really good there. And then following should be some pitch twitches uh, somewhere. There's the pitch twitches also tracking really well there. So that looks good. Um, similarly, I think the, the box frame did fine too. So here's the um, uh, snap rolls set point tracking really well there. Both directions looks okay. Go down and find some. Um, let me jump over it. Some more snap rolls. Should be some flips in here. A little problematic there, but looks okay there. Sometimes just those are kind of a little bit one-off-ish, but overall that looks okay. And then let's look at our twitch moves. So on the roll, twitch moves look okay there. And then on the pitch axis, looks good there. So basically nothing jumping out as like, you know, terrible, you know, terribly inferior. Um, they look pretty similar to me in terms of uh, set point tracking. Okay, so from the logs, um, basically to me, I think it's fairly clear that, or I can say fairly confidently that the box frame is doing a better job um, holding down uh, holding down the noise. And so moving the comparisons forward, I think it really makes sense to go with the box frame to then compare it to the plastic and leave the traditional frame uh, a little bit behind as far as this uh, this size of a frame. Now, um, I don't think that necessarily scales up um, because some of, the, some of the reasons that the box frame works particularly well at this size is because you can see that this cross bracing, you can bring it in, tie it right to those mounting points. As you scale that up, that's not going to be true anymore. Also at this size, I'm not really hugely worried about a lot of contacts there breaking these little thin spindly struts, but as you size up, I think that's going to become a bigger and bigger concern. The one part where I think you could make some argument that the box frame might not do as well is in terms of blocking thrust. So basically your motor wires are going to come sitting down the middle of that triangle. And so now you're going to have three, le you know, two legs and a wire um, all underneath your prop versus on the traditional frame, you're gonna have that wire lined up right on that arm. And so the two are gonna be kind of like sitting on top of each other. And so I think it's, it is gonna be a cleaner uh, thrust line out of the traditional frame, but I don't have, um, I don't have a thrust stand to uh, say that for 100% sure. Um, did I feel a dramatic difference in the air? No, did I see a dramatic difference in the max RPM? No. Um, could test that a little bit better, but I think at larger sizes, there's still going to be some, uh, this, this isn't necessarily going to scale up, or this conclusion is not going to scale up to larger sizes, but at 65 millimeters, I think the box frame is the one to go ahead and compare to, uh, the plastic frame. So, um, before we get to the log though, let's compare one other thing. Let's compare the weight. So to get, to get this up in the air, uh, the frame is one thing, but I needed something reasonably secure uh, to tie down the battery, to take the noise out of that. And then you gotta have your nylon screws with some nuts to secure them. And so what we're looking at for a true frame, like, you know, integrated weight, is gonna be coming in at 2.42 grams without the ducts. And then if you take a plastic frame without the ducts so that we have a direct comparison, that's coming in at 1.9 grams. So right off the start, one of the things you gotta kind of um, keep in mind is that the carbon fiber frame, as light as I got this with a 1.6 um, gram frame, it's still, 
in terms of an all up weight, once you throw the ducts on it, you know, once you put all these ducts, it's still going to be giving up a half gram of weight penalty to the plastic frame. So I think that's one of the important things to look at, uh, to keep in mind when you're factoring in, um, when you're looking at the logs. The other thing is I think, I think the traditional plastic frame is gonna have a little bit less obstruction to, um, you know, in terms of your thrust. So I think that's another factor. But let's go ahead and take a look at those logs. Okay, let's get into uh, a little bit more complicated comparisons now. So now we've got uh, four more logs. The first two are going to be the carbon fiber box frame, and then the second two are the um, the beta FPV meter 65 uh, plastic frames. So I've got this on D-term roll, and one of the things that makes this a little bit hard to compare. So here's here's the first um, log from the from the box frame, second log from the box frame and then the first log from the meter 65. So what makes this hard to compare is that we're getting noise in different areas and then it's so it's it's not just a matter of like total noise but it's like how much noise is there and where is it and and so although on the meter 65 like in here was this going to be somewhere in the like you know 200 something ish range we got some pretty tall peaks in there but down in the lower range it looks pretty good and then all of them look pretty good and on the upper end with those BMI uh, gyros they just are kind of over filtered on the high end and so when when we compare that yes we've got some taller peaks in here on the plastic frame but when we go to the carbon fiber it's kind of noisier down low and you have no chance of filtering that and what's going on over here is this just did I just hit more prop wash um, in this case maybe or is this part of like what we're seeing from the carbon fiber frame versus the um, meter 65 frame so you can see in both cases it's kind of easy somewhat easier to have them like all up at the same time here down the bottom but you can see down low the plastic frame is basically a little bit cleaner so then we should also so that's the, that's on the roll um, switch thing, I'm going to switch these over to the pitch and we'll take a look at the pitch as well and get these all switched over this might take a second for the computer to catch up with us alright so I think these are all going to be on pitch now maybe that hasn't made it over yet yeah so now on the pitch um, on the box frame, I think to me things look pretty similar um, in terms of pitch versus roll. But then on the meter 65 frame, now we this this peak has come down quite a bit. Maybe touch more noise down low. But overall, the meter 65 frame on pitch is is quite a bit cleaner than um, the box frame on on both of the logs. So. I don't know. What do you make of that? I think overall, um, what I was looking for is that because of the added inconvenience and cost of the carbon fiber frame, I was looking for something that was dramatically superior on the box frame versus the meter 65 frame. And as far as the logs go in terms of noise, I'm just not seeing that. So um, let's also look at set point tracking and make sure that we're not seeing some huge difference there. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here, pulling out um, the noise and just look at the set point tracking and do that on the plastic frame here as well. And then we'll take a look at some set point tracking. So the box frame we already looked at, so let's go ahead and do the meter 65 frame. So, looks really good, um, and so that's a that's a snap roll there, and kind of for comparison, here's the box frame, here's the meter sixty five frame. Um, you know, if anything, I would say maybe the meter sixty five frame looks a little bit cleaner on that particular one, but let's look at a couple of them. So opposite direction, not quite as clean there. 
really clean pretty clean there and then let's look at some some flips so snap flip both forward and reverse looking pretty good and so these are on on the meter 65 frames and for comparison pull up a couple of those box frame ones So I think also on the snap flips and rolls, you know, uh, the Meteor 65 frame, definitely not worse. So those look pretty good. Um, let's also look at our twitch moves. Pull those up here. And here's some twitch moves. And so to me, in both cases, these look pretty similar. I think, I think the tune is maybe just a little borderline over pushing. You can see a little bit leading there, but um, nothing terrible. I think totally acceptable. And on these on these little whoops, you kind of always have that. That's the trade off of you got to push hard enough for it to track on this on the snaps. Um, and then that always leads to a little bit, tiny bit, a little overshoot in your twitch moves. And that's just a, that's just a balance. That's just is what it is. So at the end of the day, take home is that, um, I'm not seeing anything dramatically better out of the carbon fiber box frame versus the Meteor 65, uh, plastic frame as far as these logs go. Okay. So wrapping this up, um, I think there's still one component left here, and that component is to go ahead and test uh, this frame, which I'm going to do in part two, with the ducts on it. So, so far I didn't, and the main reason I didn't do that is one time, two, I didn't have screws that were quite long enough, the M1.4 screws, to get this mounted up, so I tested it without the ducts. Once you add the ducts on to um, the box frame, there's a possibility these might act like little dampers, it's possible. I, I don't think it's very likely, and that's why I'm like not super um, hesitant to like put this video out without doing the part two just yet. But I, I don't think it's super likely that they're going to act as dampers. Um, and I think they make a big difference on the plastic frame because it's all integrated, it all works together. Versus on the carbon fiber frame, um, it's just going to be hanging out there. There is, a, I think, slightly bigger possibility that this might even worsen the resonance because you're taking something um, with a bunch of weight and sticking it out at the end and maybe that kind of interacts and it's kind of floppy too like well not super floppy but you know it's it's fixed at the motor mount but this part maybe it's not that floppy i don't know there's there's some chance maybe it makes no difference maybe it's a little positive a little negative um, and so i think that does deserve a part too but from what I see right now is when the box frame is built up, I, I like the way it looks. But with the box frame, you're kind of working against yourself in terms of whenever you mix materials, you're going to add weight at the interfaces because I can't integrate the mount into the frame. I can't integrate the, um, frame, the, the flight controller mount into the frame. And so there's just inefficiency here as we start to put this together. On the plastic frame, you've got that all integrated together. You've got your battery mount, you've got your motor mount, you've got everything just kind of working together. And unlike the box frame where these ducts are just going to be sitting out there on the ends, these ducts are actually structural on the plastic frame. They're actually integrated. Um, and I do feel like there's some further integration that could be made here. Like for example, this is a nice tall structure here and tall there, but we're not, and I think that's probably because of the way they have to mold these, like you, you can't have like hollow points in between, but I think there's some low hanging fruit here in terms of how this is integrated where you can probably get this plastic frame even stiffer and probably make the noise profile look even better. So, um, I was, I was honestly thinking that the carbon fiber um, was going to be cleaner, and 
that's the reason I spent this time working on these. But I, I don't think it's, if anything, it might be a little noisier. And if not noisier, it, it's, it's sort of a wash. So unless you like building this way, I don't really see a huge compelling reason to build up um, the carbon fiber hybrid frames. I think it looks kind of cool, so I might build one just for, for that perspective. And um, I think I'm probably going to go ahead. I, I need to bash it around, make sure it doesn't break too easily, but I'll probably um, list it at some point. But at this point in time, convenience, um, cost, and just quality of life, I think overall, I think the, the plastic frames at this point are superior to the carbon fiber hybrids. That's what I got, trying to be as objective as I can. All right, till next time, cheers.